Hello, I'm JW. Today we have an item that's been sent in, and it's this USB socket, and it's got the uh, two normal outlets there, and then two USB points there. And the story with this one is that it was installed a couple of years ago, and it worked okay for that period of time, but more recently it's broken in that the USB sockets don't put out the required voltage anymore. Now this was sent in by Martin, so let's have a look at the note, and then uh, see if we can find out what's wrong with this. Now here's the note came with this one, and it was back in January that they uh, sent this one in. And the deal is that uh, they fitted it in January 2016, so about three years ago, and it worked until November 18, so just under three years. And then the deal is it goes through not actually charging, so it basically just sort of turned on and off on a cycle. And of course the other sockets are unaffected. And uh, in terms of where they got it from, they believe it came from Wix, which is a fairly popular DIY store in the UK, and uh, they don't have a receipt or anything, but we don't uh, really need that one. So uh, let's have a look then and see what we've got. So here is the uh, thing here, and it's basically just two normal outlets, obviously with the uh, shutters and whatever in there, and then we've got two USB outlets here, which claim to be 2.1 amps for the pair there, whether that's each or in total, not clear. And as is common with most UK ones, and we do have the switches as well. So these are working, but these, of course, uh, are the things which have broken. Now, have a look on the back here. Also, they didn't use the screws that came with it. Presumably, just used the other screws, which were for the previous socket. And they didn't use the uh, screw caps either. I suppose to shove over the uh, screws there for people who don't like looking at screws. Now, you can see on the back here, this is the manufacturer. This is actually Master Plug. Though it doesn't say Master Plug, but that's basically their logo there. And uh, it says for IT equipment only, 13 amps to 40 volts, obviously. And the two standards it's got here, which is 5733 and 60950. 5733 is just for general electrical accessories, not uh, sockets specifically. And then the 60950 is basically for the uh, IT equipment. And USB charger, 2.1 amps DC, 5 volts. So let's get into this thing. I've just drilled out the two rivets there, so that removes this strap across the back. The uh, strap is basically where it goes through to the earth pin there, so see it's basically straight through and uh, that's the connection for that. So uh, I've got screws here, so let's just uh, remove those. Now of course the sockets themselves are still working as in the normal outlets. We'll have a look at the general quality of those as well. But the uh, USB part, of course, is the main problem with this. Now, the fact it's cycling on and off like that suggests that there's probably a capacitor has failed, and it's going to be the one which essentially starts the circuit going. But uh, we'll uh, no doubt find out when we've got the thing open. And of course, this is another problem with these USB type things: is that if you're going to build them into the wall, you would expect them to last for a reasonable amount of time. But of course. As we've seen here, unfortunately, they do not. So let's just lift away the top here. Yes, that metal bar there. See, it's just the uh, actual earth connections there. It's just riveted straight through. Now, just so we can remove that completely. Yeah, it's just a one piece with the uh, terminal there. And then that's actually the contacts within the socket. So get rid of that. And then the switches here, the uh, just a little spring plunger in, fairly standard sort of design there, just sort of pressed into the front moulding. And in the front moulding here we can see we've got the socket shutters, so it's just the usual type with the earth pin. So it goes in and presses through and then just slides down to reveal the other two holes. So not the best mechanism, but it's fairly common and uh, it's what the majority of sockets do tend to use. So this is what I've got inside, and it's a fairly typical arrangement for the actual socket part at least. So we've got the two uh, contacts at the bottom, so neutral here, line on this side, and the same of course over there. The uh, switch is a single pole, so it's just up here that uh, is the actual switching part. So that little plastic switch just presses either that end for on or that end for off, and it's the same over there. So it's switching in the line only, which of course is this one and this one. Neutral is connected straight through, and we can see this is the line input on the back. So that's your input terminal there. 
just sort of clamps over the tail and goes to the two switches and the neutral input just goes directly to the terminals here and then across to the other one and then the earth here is the one that we saw on that uh, basically that bar that we had which just goes across the back there with the two contacts actually as part of it and then there's a second earth terminal on the back as well now the usb part is basically uh, shoehorned into the center here and uh, there's your two outlets on the top and that'll be the transformer and a few capacitors there and not a whole lot else so let's just see if we can uh, get this out of here the power of course is coming across from the terminals here and here so it's permanently on power 24 hours a day so as soon as you've put this in the wall and connected the supply this circuit is powered up and will remain that way forever and again that's another problem with these things in that uh, pretty much all of them seem to be arranged in that fashion so it's basically uh, permanently on regardless of whether anything is installed and as well as of course wasting a certain amount of power it also means that the things in here are also going to last considerably less than they would otherwise do so uh, just get this out of here we can see the two wires here just sort of spot welded onto the two incoming contacts the uh, sockets themselves are on this separate uh, circuit board here and it's just all common between them it's just the two wires coming off there and then the uh, board itself here is in this separate plastic enclosure so at least that's not uh, too bad they've got some kind of uh, separation between the rest of it there's your uh, contacts in the back there so this is sort of an insulating piece to place in on top of that and then you've got the uh, side shielding here to cover those and of course over that side although there isn't anything on this side but this is the neutral anyway but uh, it's reasonably neatly assembled certainly a big contrast on that dreadful wi-fi control job that we saw the other day and again this part's pretty typical for these it's basically a molded plastic uh, tray and then the contacts are just sort of folded brass or whatever just placed in there and it's just relying on the distance between these i mean that's your top piece there and then i'll set down at the bottom and again that's pretty typical for whatever make of sockets you happen to get so this is the board and say that insulation goes around the back as well just see if we can uh, extract it from there so we've got this sort of pad of some kind of material stuck on the back there by the way that's sort of supposed to be adhesive or or what but it's sort of a rather strange uh, semi tacky material certainly not uh, particularly wonderful there but anyway that's sort of on the back of that so whether it's some kind of thermal deal or what isn't uh, totally clear so this is what we've got then so the actual output is here just on this little plug-in piece so, so we can just remove that here's the main board and a uh, fairly typical kind of power supply here so i've got the transformer here in this uh, yellow tape uh, various uh, electrolyte capacitors there so these are chang brand so 400 volt one there and uh, another one over there so seems reasonable enough a little uh, inductor in the middle here uh, this appears to be uh, some kind of fuse there so uh, yeah it's t2a 250 volts so fuse they have put the uh, slot between the two parts as well now of course it's not the fuse that's blown in this case because the thing is sort of attempting to work there's a uh, device down in there which we unfortunately can't see they've chopped the tab off as well which may not be useful for overheating purposes and then uh, on the other side here a couple more capacitors these are gd brand so going completely different 6.3 volts and uh, presumably the same there it's got the little uh, suppression capacitor there again that's between the sort of mains and other side there that's where the output uh, voltage is it goes over to that smaller board and we've got another uh, presumably another inductor there yeah l2 there and uh, apart from that that's all we've got on this side again wires coming over from the transformer there so there's the one in the middle it's a uh, 14 tl60 or ga 441f so uh, whichever of those you care to mention and neither of those really uh, come up with any kind of conclusive result but uh, it's a three pin thing let's go through on the other side there so uh, that is all that's on that side here's the bottom side 
So uh, bridge rectifier over this side, so just coming across from the mains input there, and uh, a lot of uh, very small resistors and capacitors in various places. This appears to be just a diode over this side. That'll be on the output uh, of the transformer. Basically it's the uh, dividing line down the middle there. And there is a decent amount of uh, space here on the board, so you can see they've uh, left a reasonable spacing there from the sort of primary and secondary side. A couple more diodes there. See how these have been glued down with the red. That's basically an adhesive. And then they've been uh, soldered afterwards, so it's a sort of wave soldering type arrangement. And then uh, other than that, the only real component there is this tiny little six-pin chip down here. Yeah, there's a few other diodes and things over there, and that uh, is presumably the thing which uh, controls the thing. Well, very difficult to get this, but uh, you can just about see there are some letters on there. So it looks like FRYK. So uh, who knows what that could be, but uh, anyway, six pins there, and they are apparently connected to something. And so the rest of it is just the uh, various resistors, and there's that. Uh, Say bridge rectifier coming in over that side. Yeah, it's FRYK doesn't actually uh, really come up with anything, so uh, who knows what that could be, but uh, obviously some sort of mini microcontroller or some more likely some dedicated uh, switch mode controller chip there. And I say that is really the only thing on there. Just the rest of that is sort of resistors and various diodes, so not a whole lot going on there. Now this is the other miniature circuit board, and it's basically on this side just got the two USB sockets there. These are the wires that come over from the other board, so just going to be the power coming in. And on this side you can see that uh, there's the wires coming in the centre here, and then we've actually got an individual chip for both of the sockets. Resistor and a capacitor there, and it's the same over that side. Now the chip is a 3002D, and appears this is actually a charge control chip. So there's a chip on each side, as you see here, and the uh, two data pins in the middle here actually go over to the chip. And we see that the power on the both sides, on the outsides, is just all common together basically, so sort of ground on the uh, left side there. And then the actual 5 volts just goes straight to the two pins from the supply. So we've got 5 volts being just shoved to those, but then additionally we've got this chip here which is presumably going to... Uh, sort of negotiate or fool the device and plugged in into thinking that the sensible amount of power is available as there's generally various ways that these uh, have been configured in the past so sort of putting a resistance between them or resistances between those and the 5 volts or ground or shorting them together and various other stuff and that depends on the device that's uh, being plugged in so assuming these chips are designed to sort of simulate the appropriate one so assuming whatever you've plugged in can then uh, know that it can draw the appropriate amount of power because if you don't have that then most devices will just assume that it's a default uh, old style power thing and it will only give you about uh, 500 milliamps or something which uh, for most devices these days is completely useless. So there is a bit of uh, semi-intelligent control going on on the outputs but say it's just based on the data pins the 5 volts is basically just taken straight over from the incoming supply. Now in terms of what's broke, it's uh, once again not particularly clear. These two here are the uh, output capacitors just basically for smoothing, so one here and one there. And these others here are on the input for the same purpose. And uh, have a look on the back of the board here, this is where the power comes in. So uh, line goes via the fuse and neutral is direct. And then you've got your rectified uh, AC on this side, so as it's smart there, sort of plus and minus. So that comes over to there, that's one of the capacitors there, so it's connected across here, and then the other one is actually here, so that's again just between the basic positive and the negative output. Now both of those uh, say look fine and test reasonably well, and the two on the output, uh, again this is the output pin here, I've got a diode here which uh, is just for the output uh, rectification, just a single item there, capacitor and resistor sort of just put uh, across that in parallel and then the two capacitors are across the uh, actual thing there, they're just those blue things on the back there and again across the 
two bits there and the other one is the same. Selena diode across the uh, output there, presumably to limit the output voltage. And uh, so a single resistor to uh, discharge those capacitors. So not a lot on the output. And in terms of the thing that working, it's presumably going to be the chip here, not actually oscillating or not starting. As it say, it does pulse on and off, so it's presumably not getting enough power to actually keep running once the thing has actually started. So it's presumably going to be either the uh, thing itself, whatever this switching, presumably a switching transistor is in the middle here, or of course one of the uh, little capacitors either here, here, or uh, one of those. But uh, given the microscopic size of this thing, I'm not going to be uh, pulling this thing apart and uh, attempting to find out what's going on in there. But uh, nevertheless, in terms of uh, quality construction, I mean, there's nothing uh, terribly actually wrong with it. But of course, it's uh, some failure there, no doubt due to the fact that it's been powered on continuously for the last three years. So that's the master plug uh, USB socket. Fairly well constructed as these things go, but uh, has the usual flaw in that this module is permanently powered. Its lifespan will be greatly improved if they had a switch on it to actually either switch it on or off on the outside, or better would be if you, when you put the plug into the USB outlet it would then turn on the power to this thing, but nobody seems to bother making one of those. They're all basically permanently powered 24 hours a day. And uh, in terms of what's broken here, again not particularly conclusive, but uh, it's going to be the fact that the chip is obviously attempting to start and then doesn't actually continue running for whatever reason. So. Either the, uh, one of the tiny little capacitors has failed in terms of what's supplying its power, or uh, say the transistor on the output has failed, which is not uh, running the, or oscillating and actually driving the output transistor. So you're just getting a pulse of power initially, then it's basically resetting. But uh, as with most surface mount stuff, unless you have a microscope and a load of gear to actually even see the things, it's uh, next to impossible to actually determine what's going on in there. And of course, surface mount stuff is designed to be cheap to manufacture. Repair isn't even considered, and it's intended to be thrown away and uh, turned into e-waste as soon as it's broken, which of course is what's going to happen with this one. So that's it for this time, and until next time, thanks for watching.